So, the video that I've been talking around and been meaning to cover for some time now, how to stabilize the HP axis with the foods that you consume. Okay, I'm going to give you globally three strategies, overarching strategies, and then um, there will be more unpacking in future videos. Maybe that's a reason to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for tuning in already. So, number one. First of all, you have to have the building blocks in place in order to stabilize the HP axis. There's going to be some repair involved. You need basically the bricks to build the structure to repair. So when we're talking about stabilizing the HP axis, we're talking about three different systems in particular. The nervous system, the endocrine system, and also I would add the gastrointestinal system because of the overlapping influence between parasympathetic nervous system that has largely to do with the gastrointestinal tract and sympathetic meaning uh, fight or flight that has to do more with the nervous system and the endocrine system so those three systems are the ones that we have to target having the building blocks in place meaning substances that are used for those cells to repair them to um, do all the various things that we need to do in those particular systems let me give you some examples an example of a deficit of one of these substances would be when a pregnant woman does not consume enough folate um, early pregnancy or even before she's pregnant her baby is at risk of developing neural tube defects this is when the nervous system um, the spine doesn't close all the way or there are other pretty serious effects that we see direct correlation I mean, this is well known conventionally as well as naturopathically um, that that's a deficiency that will cause that particular those particular um, problems so we know that folate is one of these substances that is utilized in the nervous system um, and, and we know this by its absence and the problems seen therein so that's the same idea if you don't have the building blocks things are going to be misshapen and things are not going to be able to um, to be functioning at their apex at their best um, and you can't repair things if you don't have the things necessary to repair them with. So that's strategy number one. Other examples of that would be in terms of specifics, um, just to whet your appetite for future videos. Uh, B complex vitamins are utilized by the adrenals in producing a lot of the hormones as cofactors. So you're going to burn through more B complex vitamins um, if you are under the chronic st stress of HP axis dysfunction, say, for example, with PTSD. You know, your, the trauma and the stress of even flashbacks or the various things that are happening um, is demanding that cortisol be shot out in the adrenals. And therefore, the things, the complex vitamins in particular, are necessary to make those hormones and therefore you burn through those faster. So you need those. That's one piece. Vitamin C would be another. Cortisol, you utilize vitamin C in secreting cortisol. Another thing. Um, so making sure the building blocks are in place, that's strategy number one. Strategy number two would be to reduce or eliminate to the extent that you can trauma to the HPA axis from your foods. Foods can do this. Or let me expand that broader. Substances that you are ingesting. Substance number one that might cause such a problem would be you guys guessed it, right? Sugar. Any kind of sugar is going to traumatize the HPA axis when you're ingesting particularly um, processed sugars, which the standard American diet is rich in, will mean that, number one, you're pushing your body already further. The HPA axis is getting strained by the fact that you're consuming a lot of sugar on top of the fact that you're already at risk of developing type 2 diabetes because of the trauma the long-standing stress to your system causing glucose to be dumped into your blood so you're subjected to high glucose already and then adding to that you're eating a holy ton of sugar bad bad combination there can you see how that exacerbates the situation yes and also the addictive properties of sugar, the fact that people do a lot of emotional eating, trying to fill the void and avoid processing the pain of the trauma or looking at it closely, right? Oh, I'm just going to eat some sugar. Give me some cake, right? I, I 
have done this. So, cut the sugar. Two, alcohol. This is another trauma, micro trauma, to the whole HPA axis. For two reasons. Reason number one, it destabilizes blood sugar. Reason number two, it burns through your B vitamins. Much like point number one. Remember I said you need the building blocks? B vitamins being some of those building blocks? Oh, processing alcohol through the liver involves utilization, ties up a lot of your B complex vitamins. Therefore, you're going to further deplete the B vitamins that you're already, already depleting because you're secreting a lot of cortisol. And the adrenals are working over time and they're burning through the B complex vitamins. And it's often a coping mechanism. Many of us, you know, self-medicate with the alcohol, further traumatizing. I mean, it's, it's has deleterious effects on the brain. So all these things are reason to reduce the trauma to your system and eliminate the alcohol. Point number th or thing number three that will traumatize the system. And there's more. These are just three examples, really. Nicotine. So. We already know a lot of the deleterious effects of nicotine on the lungs and, I mean, go down the list systems and you can, there are deleterious effects. If any of you have seen the YouTube commercials with the little gremlin thing that, you know, if we only knew how many thousands of substances are toxic in this one cigarette, you know, we might be less likely to consume it. You've seen them. I've seen them. This is the idea. Nicotine is toxic um, to the system. and as a, it also stresses out the HP axis. These stabilize the blood sugar. There are other mechanisms, but that's all I'm going to get into right now. Point number three for global overarching strategy of what to eat in terms of stabilizing the HP axis. Add food substances that buffer the whole axis. So what do I mean by this? Well, there are substances that will stabilize blood sugars, which as I mentioned in the previous point, are already being thrown all over the place. So you can have the opposite kinds of foods, like around these parts, prickly pear cactus is one such food that can stabilize blood sugar, meaning if someone is hypoglycemic, meaning low blood sugar, and they consume prickly pear cactus, the, particularly the leaves of it, it will actually help increase their blood sugar as it needs to be. But at the same, by the same token, if they are hyperglycemic, meaning their blood sugar is too high, it'll actually bring it down. Amazing, huh? You have a, a substance that goes either way? How cool is that? Um, there are others that do have the same kind of effect um, in terms of stress. So in naturopathic medicine, we refer to these as adaptogenic herbs. You hear the word adaptogen? <laughs> That's by, by design, guys. Uh, they helped you adapt to stress. They help buffer the stress and also help uh, the adrenals deal with the stress. So they're fairly safe in terms of the category of herbs. A lot of herbs you have to be careful with. Um, just because something is natural does not necessarily make, mean it is safe. Do not make an assumption. And at the same time, adaptogens are a class that do tend to be fairly safe. Um, they tend to be, a lot of them are foods. Um, or very gentle kinds of herbs that um, if somebody uses common sense, they tend to be decent. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate your support, your likes, and I, adios.